Well, I know I need to really get back to more modern retro games, but I did want to showcase something pretty cool. In my last episode, I played an ancient, original 1978 Apple II game called Beneath Apple Manor. But you can actually delve further back into the mists of time and now play games that actually came out in 1976 on the original Apple I. It's an archaic system. It takes a lot of strange commands to load things up. But through some dogged determination, I was able to play every one of the Apple I games, save just two. I couldn't find Little Tower in a playable form, and I never got Nim to work. Well, with that being said, here is a quick rundown and a look at all the Apple I games, and I'll quickly tell you which ones you can beat to add to your growing, completed games list. 21. You can break the game if you exceed 32,768. It's a common issue with integer basic exceeding memory size. 23 matches. It's a puzzle game. Try to remove the last match. Win. Abandoned Farmhouse Adventure. I did a full video on this. This is a text adventure game on the Apple One and you can win this game. AC Doocy. You bet on whether the next card will land between the two dealt cards. I believe the game just goes on as try and make as much money as you want. The Apple 30th Anniversary Program is just a demo. It's not a game, but it's really cool. Especially impressive considering what system it's running on. Apple Enhanced Checkers. It's a nice ASCII graphic representation. It's checkers against a computer. And I guess you can beat it, but I didn't bother to play until winning. I'm just not the biggest Checkers fan. Apple Star Trek. The famous Star Trek game, which was on every early system. And I've played it elsewhere. I'm not a big fan, so I didn't beat it, but you could. Batnum is a battle of numbers. Again, you make the computer take the last item from the various piles. Win! Blackjack is just the same game as 21, which we've mentioned. Bowling, a uh, text-based bowling fun, yeah. Brian's Quiz, oh, this is another one I never got working, quite right. Codebreaker is a very nice looking mastermind type of game. I beat it in just 22 seconds on one of the levels. Concentration, not as easy to play, but it is still a good game of concentration in text format. I got a good score. Craps. Gamble, 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 don't crap out. Deal or no deal. This obviously came much later than the Apple One itself, but it's a great game. However, I never won the million, but I think that's how you'd beat it if you actually win the million. Eliza. Just pausing here to have a quick therapy session with Eliza. Okay, moving on. Football! Ah, oh, I hate text football games. Gomoku. This is basically like Connect 4, but you must get five in a row on the game board. You can win even though the computer doesn't know about it. In other words, it's not checking for a win state. Hammurabi. This is the age-old economics and ruler game. Oh, wise Hammurabi. How can you prevent us from getting coronavirus? Yeah, I've beaten this one elsewhere. Hangman. Love me a quick game of Hangman. Naturally, this is easy enough to win a few games against the computer. Hilo. It's a guess the number game with just enough turns that you must get a tad lucky from time to time. And luck is that gambling element. 100. This is a logic game. You add 1 to 10 each time and you want to be the person to get to the tidy sum of 100 and win. Hunt the Wumpus, another classic game, so of course it gets its own basic port to the Apple One. I've beaten it elsewhere. Herkel. Oh yeah, quick and easy hunt and kill. One more game to put in your win column. Life. You know, I never much understood the appeal of the, quote, life game. It seems more like some weird simulator. There it is. Nothing to beat here. Lunar Lander. This, first of all, there's a Lunar Lander with just text statistics, but you can win that one like I did here. And it's not a conspiracy theory to land on the moon. 
Lunar Lander with ASCII graphics, this time with a real footage As in ASCII. I beat this one too, and so can you. Mastermind. This is the popular classic board game that many people have attempted to recreate on a microcomputer. But it fits. It's a great game for early computers. Win. Micro chess. Yeah, chess is hard enough without having to redraw and then interpret the signs after every move. So I didn't beat this version. Nim. I never got it working. Reverse. It's a cool little logic game. You rearrange numbers until you get them all into perfect sequence. It's fun. I like that one. Win. Rock, paper, scissors. This is just an endless rock, paper, scissors game with no goal or outcome that you're shooting for. So it's endless. Slots. Oh, yeah. Slot machines. It's the thrill of playing an ASCII casino machine without even any smoke to inhale. Star Trek. This is another Star Trek version. I don't know if it's the same as Apple Trek or whatever, but I'm not a big fan. There's also Star Trek 2003. It's another version of Star Trek. Is it yet any wonder why I just started looking at these, but I've not bothered to beat them. There's just too many. They're too boring. Tic-tac-toe. Normally, I definitely spend time to win a game like this, but it was broken enough to make it not possible. Trek 2. Oh, look at that. Another Star Trek game. Oh, gosh. Typing Tutor is not a game, but you can learn to type. Why would you do that here? I don't know. Wari is just another name for the famous Awari game. Yeah. Tricky how they changed the name so we wouldn't guess what kind of program it was, huh? You know, I'd try to win this, but the computer seems broken. I could never figure this out. Word. Word, man. It's a simple word guessing game with clues like the Mastermind games. So it plays like Mastermind, but it's with words instead. And this one I won, and my best was in just three guesses. And that's really about it. There's definitely some fun in the mix. Uh, I also love poking around with ancient hardware like this. So for me, that was its own kind of fun. And now I can say that I've played and even beaten some of the oldest personal computer games ever. So that's a badge of honor. I like to call this episode the Retro Retro Master Beater. But next time, we will jump forward to a much more modern retro game. Stay tuned. Retro Master Beater, later.